Hey guys, welcome back to Raycom TV. I'm Tom. I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Sam from Carno because today we're going to be taking a look at the Sony DWX digital wireless system and, well, range testing it. Our favourite things to do, the classic Raycom walk test. Sam, thanks for coming down. No worries, thanks very much for having me. So give us a run through of the products we've got here and then, as usual, we're going to dive straight downstairs. We have Piers and Doz ready and waiting to run us through. But Sam, give us a quick overview of actually what gear we've got with us today. What Great stuff, doing? thanks very much. Yes, this is the uh, Sony DWX range, first launched in 2008. We're now up to Generation 3, which mm -hmm. was launched in 2018. Uh, the ones that we're mainly focusing on today is the uh, slot-in receiver, uh, the micro belt pack, and the plug-on. But of course, we have got all the accessories, the handheld, battery chargers, antennas, that kind of world. Um, the system's been going, like I say, since 2008. Uh, fully digital uh, system with cross-remote on board has been since the very beginning, uh, where we can remote control our transmitters. It's a fully digital system from, from uh, start to finish. And uh, the, the thing that has really brought this into uh, back into our lives again is we now have a 25-pin uh, slot adapter for the uh, DWR SO3D. Back in the day, back in uh, 2008, we were on 15 pin only, which uh, unfortunately means it's Sony cameras only. But ever since uh, uh, 2019, we've had the new receiver with the 25 pin, which makes it you know, suitable for the location sound world, which is why we're here today. Absolutely. So let's give the people what they want to see. Let's range test them. Piers, how are you doing down there? Well, it's, it's uh, not quite the usual uh, fine weather that uh, we're used to here for our walk tests, but uh, we're going to give it our best shot. Uh, we're, we're actually walking two transmitters from uh, the, the Sony range. We've got uh, the uh, DWT-B03R, uh, which is the rechargeable third generation uh, belt pack, and we've got the dwt P01N, which is the uh, the plug-on, which we've got, we've got here on the boom. Um, and I think b before we go, um, the Wizard of Dolls is going to uh, adjust my uh, microphone. Yes. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm currently running two milliwatts, and I think that probably wouldn't be a fair walk test. No, fair enough. So here's what I've got in the bag as usual, the uh, Mix Pre 3, my IEM receiver, and the Sony DWR SO3D slot receiver. Um, which allows remote control of Piers's transmitter, which we'll just do now. Uh, so receiver one, transmitter one. I scroll down. This is a, a Zigbee remote, isn't it? Power. It is Zigbee. Uh, right, so I press and hold set. We're currently on low power, as you can see. Uh, we want to wind that up to the maximum available, which is 25 milliwatts. Press set briefly. That's that set, and we'll go back round to the, the main display. Uh, the reason I've got the umbrella, by the way, uh, it's not because uh, we're expecting rain, although looking at those clouds over there, we may well do. It's just so the, the camera doesn't pick up the reflection on the screen. I have to say the reflection on the screen is very minimal in real life. It just seems to be affecting the it's camera. Very bright, it's a bright very bright screen, bright OLED display. Lots of contrast there, and uh, I don't suppose anybody's going to have any problem with that in the sunshine. Right, right. should we go then? Yeah. So we've got, I've got uh, two people walking backwards in front of me uh, and I'm listening to myself uh, in my left ear, I can hear the uh, belt pack transmitter and in my right ear I'm listening to the boom. Um, so I think we'll take the shortcut. Uh, while you're walking down there Piers, I'll just mention the QL on the display here. Uh, that's a quality level, right. and it's actually a histogram of level against time. So as you walk away, there you go, we're just starting to see you dropping off a little bit there. So uh, that is a histogram of time versus quality. Well, we'll, we'll uh, do a nice mix in, in, in post of the, uh, the, the bag. I can't hear the bag in my IEM, so you're going to have to tell me when, when that drops out. Yep. I'm listening to myself off the usual uh, 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 paddles, the, the, uh, the passive antennas we've got... Uh, permanently rigged out of the uh, Raycon window um, and so that's feeding a DWR R3 I'm just starting to losing you in the bag now Piers right so are you losing the uh, the belt pack or the just, boom uh, just the belt pack at the moment yeah yeah well the boom's obviously up a bit uh, a bit higher yeah. so I'd kind of oh, expe back expe now. expect Fine. that to, to go a bit further yeah you are actually also to, to try and say, save uh, um, or make it easier to see the screen. You're you're behind the uh, 
the bushes as well. And it's uh, un un unlike other times when we've done these walk tests, there's quite a lot of uh, growth at the moment because we are doing this in the middle of August. And it should be sunny and warm, but it's not. But hey, welcome to England. So, um, so t t tell us a bit about, uh, uh, Sam, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the, the, this third generation digital wireless that we're, we're walking right now. Yeah, so uh, DWX Generation 3 came, first came out in 2018 with the uh, DWT BO3R, which is the belt pack that you're working with. It's a brand new design, totally new circuitry. Uh, we have a three pin limo connector on the end. It's a magnesium body, totally um, drop proof onto concrete. Um, we've got uh, IPX5 rating on board, so perfect for sweaty actors. At the end of the day, we've seen this used quite heavily within the West End, uh, West End environment, which is possibly one of the harshest environments there is yeah. out, in the, out in the world. Um, so yeah, and with the Generation 3, we also launched uh, new frequency variants. We've got totally wide band uh, across the board. We either have a, uh, 144 or 148 megahertz spacing uh, within, within the Generation 3. Uh, world. The so that you've got coverage all, all the way from 470 to 714. Uh, Just get a few breakups in the bag from the belt pack oh, yeah. again. Right. Okay. You've been rock solid for the last uh, 100 meters or so, actually. Well, we're, we're just uh, just coming past the fire station. There was a, in fact, there is a fire going on in the in the the training. There's like a a, a training area where they they uh, have regular fires. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a, a little bit of smoke coming out of there right now. Um, so yeah, it's uh, we're just coming I'm to starting to lose both the boom and the, oh, and the belt pack. Yeah, we're we're still all good in the studio though. We've still got you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. I'm just about uh, coping, enjoying the uh, the fresh air out here. Um, so yeah, we're just coming to the top of the uh, the slope here. This is, this is where traditionally I would expect to lose. Uh, or at least start to get some dropouts. Um, although Jake's doing a great job of holding the boom up, up high, that seems uh, that seems pretty solid at the moment. Uh, we've got uh, a boy racer testing their uh, wheels over there. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. I mean, it's 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 dropping out ever so slightly on the boom, I would say actually. And what what power are we running on the 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 the, the boom, Sam? Yeah, so the N-series will do up to 50 milliwatts, right. so the, yeah, the boom and the handheld will both do up to 50. Okay, and we're running 20, 25 milliwatts on the, uh, on the belt pack? Yes. So, so the, the, uh, t traditionally, the, these, uh, these wireless mics, apart from obviously in the Sony cameras, they've been very popular in the, uh, the theatre world, haven't, haven't they? So yeah, it's, the beginnings of this series was purely an ENG system. Like I said before, the, the original Generation 1 was just a slot in, a belt pack, and a plug-on for use with the camera system. And the idea of the cross remote came about so that the camera uh, operator could wirelessly control the transmitters on the talent without even having to put the camera down. You could do mm. it physically on the camera. Um, from then, the rack receivers were brought out, and uh, they've been used in regional news, broadcast studios. And yeah. Uh, you can translate that quite easily into other into other environments in the West End. The, the, with digital wireless, the key is being able to pack as many units into the smallest amount of spectrum as possible. Yeah. With the Sony's, uh, you so get... So well, what's the, cha the minimum channel spacing then? Uh, with so this generation 3, so the, uh, the two belt packs I have here will do... Uh, they advise 375k <laughs> spacing, so it's mm -hmm. 21 channels per 8 meg TV band. But we can you can pack them tighter, but it's on your head if you do it. Mm. We would say stick with the channel plan. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning is you don't have to sacrifice RF power for tighter spacing. It's 375k spacing, whether you're at 2 milliwatts, 10 milliwatts, or 25 milliwatts. Sure. Right. So yeah, I mean, as, as I always say uh, to, to, to people when I'm giving them RF, uh, RF advice for their studios and, uh, and, and uh, the setups is, is I only ever use the power you need, uh, you know, ne ne never run more power than you need because it wastes battery and it, it's more likely to overload the, the receiver. But yeah, we're, we're on the on the bridge now, so uh, oh, we're making good progress. Yeah, we are making good progress. I'm getting a, I'm hearing some slight hits in my left ear, which is the the belt pack. Uh, but the boom, the boom's still holding up quite uh, quite nicely here. So. Uh, 
Yeah, we, we're using channels obviously in channel 38, um, mm -hmm. which is very, very clear in, the, in this area. Um, so yeah, we're not, uh, the range isn't limited by, by noise at all. Uh, so shall I, shall I uh, attempt to cross the road then? I uh, think so, the famous road. But are we going to get the joke from you? Uh, well, I'm actually a bit nervous because I'm not sure actually I'm going to have to be crossing the road right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, poor, poor, poor Jake there had to, not, he had to trust me there uh, and <laughs> trust that I wasn't going to let him get run over. Uh, but yes, yes, we're across, uh, across the road now. Um, and I've still so got still, still still hearing myself quite quite yeah. loud and clear. And we've got we've still got great reception from you up here in the studio. I can hear you loud and clear. What what's uh, what sort of dynamic range do you get from this uh, digital system? Because obviously digital systems, uh, you know, do do, do uh, offer a much much wider dynamic range than uh, yeah, so analogs. Yeah, the system is 120 t uh, 120 dB of dynamic range mm -hmm. from from the from the input. Um, and then, yeah, if you're using the slot in in an AES mode or uh, Dante or AES out of the rack receiver, once it's converted to digital within the transmitter, the next time that that may ever be converted back to analog is someone's TV or a pair of headphones mm -hmm. by the user if you've got a fully digital workflow. Um, the system is linear, 20 to 20K, like I say, 120 dB direct range, no limiters. It's, based, it's trying to be the cleanest possible system you mm -hmm. can get. Excellent. Well, I'm, I can still hear, hear myself. Um, so yeah, the, the, uh, my left ear is going a little bit, so yeah, the belt pack uh, uh, predictably is, uh, is starting to drop just a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're getting a couple of little bits. Yeah, I think we're, well. we're, we're, yeah, we're probably just about getting to the, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing it, it's, uh, it's going on both sides now, so I think, yeah, maybe we'll, uh, we'll call it a day here. Of course, when I turn around, obviously I'm, I'm now facing the, uh, uh, the studio um, and uh, the aerial now is, is line of sight so it's, uh, it's come back again there's a bus just went past that created a few dropouts but uh, so yeah, um, an, an, another great uh, another great walk test so it's yeah, well, well, well done and thank, yeah. thanks to uh, the guys from Carno for, for coming down and uh, yeah really, really enjoyed this pity you couldn't have uh, brought, brought some better weather <laughs> right Thank you, Piers. Now it's, it's, for, uh... it's pizza time now, yeah? Oh, absolutely. Always pizza <laughs> this time. This has taken a lot longer than usual to set up, so we're all a bit hungry. So oh, We'll get there. <laughs> right, thank you, okay. Piers. Cheers. Sam, you're from Carno, so you're the UK distributor for the DWX range. Let's take a look then, as Piers is on his pretty long walk back, which is a good we thing. Have... It's a good thing in these situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at this ecosystem then. We've got a range of products in the studio with us. We touched on them before we started. Yes sending Piers on his way. Um, run me in a little bit more detail actually yeah. what, we've, what we've got here in a deeper dive as such. Yeah, for sure. So the main focus for the, for the location sound world will be this little set here. We've got a bit more of that I'll come to in a, in a, in a short while. Um, the main focus is, as Dos rightly pointed out, the DWR SO3D, which is the um, two channel slot in wireless receiver. Um, you wouldn't believe this, but this has exactly the same RF system and uh, audio quality as the rack and the rack is obviously much bigger system. Um, the key thing that came out with Generation 3, as I uh, showed earlier, was the fact that we now have the ability to change our pin set. So you as, an, as a, a user can have uh, your standard 25 pin set on the bottom if you're going into anything uni slot. Obviously we've got um, super slot compatibility with Sound Devices 8 series. You can control uh, not just your receiver but all your transmitter parameters as long as you're within cross remote range. Yeah. Um, you can do all that from on top of your 8 series. You can still, of course, quite inexpensively shove the 15 pin set on the bottom and you can run it into a Sony camera yeah. straight in, AES in two channels into your Sony camera. It's worth, it's worth pointing out uh, that uh, we also have a, a range of uh, adapters that we have specially made mm -hmm. which allow you to use it on cables. I believe today we're using the systems in the, in the bag on a, on, a, on a third party adapter which gives you high rows in and we can yeah. have them custom made for someone's uh, use at the end of the day, it just takes the 25 pin and adapts it. Um, two main transmitters to look at, we have, like we said earlier, the DWT BO3R, which is the lithium ion rechargeable uses the Sony NPBX1, um, and you get about seven hours on a, on a full cycle um, yeah. at two milliwatts, which is great. Um, like we said earlier, it's a brand new design inside. Uh, they actually brought out a new codec, which I'll come on to in a sec. 
um, for Generation 3, which has like the lowest latency, the best sound quality yeah. possible. Um, from that, they then developed the B DWT B30. I nearly tripped over the codes then. Um, so the B30 and the B03 internally are identical. They sound the same, they're the same RF structure, same frequencies. The only difference is this is standard double A's, mm. isn't IP rated just because of the nature of the, the design. Sure. Uh, and then we have a plug-on, the, the DWT PO1N. This is a, an older series, this is the N series, but with everything still being backwards compatible, you could use a PO1, which is the original. You can mm. still use that uh, with the system. Uh, this is uh, obviously phantom power. I think we get about five and a half hours on phantom power on yep. a pair of double A's. Obviously it still runs on a double A sled in the bottom there. Um, other units in the range, we have uh, the handheld, the DWM02N, which has an interchangeable head. You don't have to use Sony heads, you can use DPA. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything with the, with the three ring adapter. Uh, we have a lovely battery charger for the DWT B03R, uh, mm -hmm. which allows you to either slot the battery straight in, or uh, you can drop your transmitter yep. straight in as well. Uh, we then have paddles, uh, paddle antennas like everyone does. Yep. You know, we've always got our own infrastructure. Of course. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to do mention as well, like I said earlier about backwards compatibility, is um, introduce the idea of codecs. So mm -hmm. a codec is the method in which a digital system packs up the data at one end, transmits it over UHF, and unpacks it at the other end. Everyone has their own. This is why you can't have one digital system listen to another. You can think of it as a compander, and you have different compander settings, but there is no compounding, it's purely just the method of, of communication. Uh, mm. Sony's Generation 3 has four codecs on board. We have Mode 1, which is for uh, Generation 1 receivers and transmitters. So like I said, we can put these in old mode, send them back 10 years, and yeah. they can sit in, in Generation 1. Mode 2 is, uh, there's always a trade-off with codecs. You can improve your error correction, but you add latency, or you can lessen your sound quality by transmitting less audio, and you have sure. be better yeah. range. Generation, uh, sorry, mode two is uh, your high quality, low latency mode for uh, the N series, the plug on right. and the handheld. I'm going to skip one. Mode four is the same, but designed specifically for the generation three circuitry. It cool. just it yeah. gives you the same parameters, but in, a, in this newer. I mean, the, the round trip latency on this is 2.2 millise milliseconds on the digital output on the slot in, which is pretty incoherible. Yeah. Um, mode 3 is the interesting one. So mode 3 is designed for when you're in a really horrendous RF environment. You add about 3 to 4 milliseconds of latency into the system. But what that is adding is a huge amount of error correction into the signal. So with digital, it's all about being able to unpack the data from your signal to noise ratio. If you're in a tight spot, you can drop it into mode 3 and it should just sit on top and get through mm. perfectly well. Not something you want to have to use, but, but it's, it's there, there if you it's need there it. It's there as a safety yeah, net. Absolutely. And what, what's also worth noting is that all of these parameters are remote controllable. Your RF power, your mo your codec, your frequency, your attenuator, which is mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the input trim on the um, transmitters, low cut filter, sleep and wake. You can put the transmitters to sleep and wake mm -hmm. them up again. Um, there is no difference on any of the units, on any of the transmitters, as to how much functionality there is on that cross remote. Sure. The cross remote is the same for the for the belt pack as it is for the plug on as it is for the handheld. Yeah. With the slot in receiver, you physically can control it from on top of the, the receiver using um, the buttons and the little antenna inside the slot in. With the rack receiver, which we've got over in the studio, you can use the onboard whip, but it only goes about two meters and it's designed for bench testing. In that world, you would use the RMU01, which is the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. This yep. on the end. Yep. That is our uh, remote control antenna that you sure. would run onto set and you can mesh up to 15 of them uh, within, within the network. Sure. Um, what you can also do with the rack, which is um, great for multi-channel systems, is you can run Wireless Studio, which is our own software, which, which um, controls multiple channels at once. You can literally set 80 channels to go to sleep, 80 channels to wake up, set the gains, set your frequency deployments all from within the software, and it will just send the control down to the uh, receiver. Easy as that? It's very simple. It's very easy when you want he it to be. He makes it sound so simple. I'm here trying to keep up, and he just makes <laughs> it sound simple. But Sam, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you for Piers and Doz as well downstairs for putting Cheers. themselves at risk of the weather yet again for one we're of our walks. We're almost tests. back at the studio, actually. You went on so long. So. That means pizza time. <laughs> okay. You smell it from yeah. here. But yeah. Sam, thanks so much for coming in. No Fountain worries. of knowledge. I've learned so much from you here. Guys, 
Thank you for tuning in again. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see any of our other walk tests, just head over to Raycom TV and they'll all be there in their own separate folder. So watch away to your heart's content, but this is the Sony DWX range and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks.